My name is Kristina Zarenko. I'm a technical SEO consultant turned a course creator. I packed 10 years of my experience into two popular courses, Technical SEO Pro and SEO Friendly Website Migrations. And I learned early in my career that in technical SEO, everything, the devil is in the detail. Because you might think that things are working properly, but then when you look under the hood, you might find that there is some minor technical SEO issue that is actually costing you lots of traffic. And today I'm going to show you three specific examples of these unexpected technical SEO issues that you can find on your or your client's website potentially and then how to resolve those issues. So let's start. The first one is buttons versus links. What do you know about this? So buttons trigger an action like adding it to a card or submitting a form and links point from page A to page B or page one to page two, whatever. They serve as part of internal linking or external linking and really help with um, navigation across the website. And then buttons can be styled as links and links can be styled as buttons. That's where things might get tricky. And one more thing is that from web perspective, buttons are added with button or input if they're part of the form and links are added with a href and then the URL. The issue happens though, when buttons serve as links. I've seen it on many websites when people want to style a link as a button, but then they want to add a link there. And what they do, they use window location and then href URL, or they use an on-click event to the URL. Well, from a user perspective, nothing is different if, uh, if there was a link or a link added like this uh, into a button. But from a web development perspective, from a web center's perspective, that makes a huge difference. Because in this case, you rely on Google to interact with your content and Google doesn't. And in this case, in the second case, when you have a href and then the URL, you actually telling Google everything is great, you just use this link to attribute it to the internal linking on my website. And that's exactly what you want to do, especially in the main navigation of the website. To sum it up, when it comes to buttons and links, use links to point from one page to another page. Use buttons when you want to trigger some action like adding to cart or submitting a form, and don't confuse the two. That's it, these are the rules, they're pretty simple, and they will definitely help you in different situations when you need to decide what element to use. Okay, so on to the next one. Images as backgrounds. It's not a surprise that images are important because images appear in Google search results and drive image search traffic. But it only happens if Google can actually index those images. The issue though happens when images are added as background images with CSS. Again, I've seen it so many times when people use background images while in reality, they meant to use normal images that they want to be indexable and then rankable. But it will not be possible if you use CSS for adding uh, images because they are treated as background image. And even though there is a URL pointing to the image location, you explicitly tell Google, disregard this image in terms of ranking and in terms of indexing, because this image is just a background image, which is part of the design. It makes sense. So if you want the images to be indexable and rankable, use image and then source and then uh, point to the image location. To sum it up, use image source for indexable images and if you want to use CSS, use it but for background images only that are only part of the design and you don't really care for them about bringing traffic to your website. Okay, and the last one is image lazy loading. It's very important to understand that it's very different how we see website and how Google sees a website. So when you go to a website, whether it's desktop or mobile, you see the content above the fold, whether it's images, the copy, and then you need to scroll to see the rest. But when it comes to Googlebot, it's very important to make sure that Googlebot can see all the content on the page right away. So whether it's the copy, whether it's images, you need to make sure that the whole content is seen so that Google can look at the page and estimate how optimized it is. Otherwise, if you just show um, some above the fold content to Google, that's not going to be enough. 
And what's important to really get here is that Google doesn't interact with content and Google doesn't scroll. So if you rely on Google to interact with your content or scroll, you will be disappointed because it will just not do that. And a good, really good example of this is when placeholder images are um, indexed instead of the normal images. Placeholder image is kind of a dummy image that you would use below the fold to make sure that it's uh, really light so it doesn't impact uh, loading of the page, the speed of uh, loading of the page. And then once you scroll as a user, this placeholder image will be switched to the normal image. But guess what? Google doesn't scroll. So in this situation, what you need to do, you need to make sure that all the images are seen to Google. So even if you're using placeholder images, you always need to have a default image URL that Google can go to, grab the image, index it, and so that it can be crawled. So that should be used here in URL, so image source, and then the URL, the, the URL of the default image, the location. And then you can always use source set to list the image files for different um, screen resolutions as well. To sum it up, don't rely on Google to scroll or interact with your content. And secondly, use image source and then default image that Google will see and index, not placeholder, but default image. So as I said, technical SEO is really fascinating. I love it a lot. And there are three things that I find really important for technical SEO to be really good in this field. First of all, you need to know how to find issues like this, for example. You also need to define if this issue is a real issue or if it's some random alert from some SEO tool that you can actually ignore. And third, you need to know how to resolve this issue on this particular website that you're working on, considering the business goals, the tech stack, and the resources that you have. That's it. Thank you.